welcome onto Lame Heart. He's coming soon to a town near you. He after touring with the likes of Ed Sheeran, the Coronas, Codeline, he's a steady force in Ireland with a few EPs already and the new album. Welcome, Ryan McMullen. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh, I'm all right. Lovely to be talking to you. You too. So you've had so much going on for the last few years and there's a lot more coming in 2022, not least to mention your first album, Redesign. It's coming soon, eh? 26th of August. It's been a long time coming, eh? Yeah, it's in, we're into the final months of it now. Um, and as you say, it has been a long time coming. It feels like it's been um, coming for about 22 years at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it's exciting. It's finally, it's finally here. And yeah, and, and we've got a huge tour to support it. So it's, yeah, life's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's gone through a few delays as lots of artists have had. And you had a bit of rethinking to do. You redesigned it in a way and there's just a great mixture of songs to there's ones to sort of jump up and down to but then there's slower more paired back moments really looking in at yourself yeah I think um the the idea it was always called redesign and then I kind of redesigned redesigned so name was pretty apt but there but um but yeah I think to ignore the pandemic would sort of be a disservice to the album you know nobody wants to make a you know a COVID album or a pandemic album um but certain songs were just hard to ignore, you know, and I guess uh, with the time off and the time away from other songs, I guess it just made sense to let that be a part of it and catch up and be present and relevant rather than, oh, this song was written four years ago. Uh, I hope you like it now. <laughs> and I think I heard Zane Lowe say he, I don't know, it's just a beautiful metaphor. He was talking about the pandemic and he was like, it's going to be a great harvest in terms of musicians and so clearly you've harvested a few good things out of the time yeah although saying that everything that i wrote in that time bar about two songs was all pretty heavy and pretty morose <laughs> but but yeah he's, he's definitely right there'll be a lot to write about i think the longer we go on and process what actually went, went like what the fuck actually happened um i think it'll change from the depression to a bit of anger you know i think there's a lot of uh mistakes that was made and I think that's whenever the harvest will really come you know when people decide you know what that was bullshit (laughs) absolutely and now I've had a sneaky listen to the album oh good really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the new single because you've got a song coming out and it's wilder so we've had a few tasters so far we've had boy on the radio we've had static flailing real love and now we have wilder yeah it's uh it's kind of one of them ones that made the made the list from the previous list. Um, it it's just about having a good time, really. You know, it's it's essentially about being that person that's maybe too shy or maybe reserved, and meeting somebody that is just larger than life, and they kind of inspire you to be a wee bit larger too. So, I think we can all get on board with that. I'm sure everybody's had a date that they're kind of going, "I need to up my game here if I want to." <laughs> I wanted to get out of your shell. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can definitely see the audience enjoying that one when it's out. And especially after you've waited for so long to release that one and a few other songs that are on the track list that you've had since before the pandemic and not having seen sort of the audience reaction yet in a way. I was going to say it's pretty daunting, but I suppose it is in a in a way, but it's it's also not in others. But what I mean by it being daunting is, you know, you've had these people follow you for all these years, hoping for waiting for the album. And then, you know, you you just hope that they like it. Now, if they don't like it, it's kind of like, well, I'll just write another one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I just I guess trying to write things for people is sort of the wrong way to approach music anyway. But um, and I think so anyway, I think if you try and write a song to cater to something, you're going to write a shit song. Um, but. Yeah, I guess it's it's one of them things. I hope they understand where I'm at and I hope they can take something from each song because it's weird. They're all from experiences. Hence, you know, that kind of wilder, which is free and fun and happy. And then you've got the likes of flailing in episodes where it's down. And I guess, yeah, hopefully people can take away something from each song or, yeah, that's the interesting part will be once it's out and people start to tell me what they think and, you know, what songs connected and <clears throat> even what songs didn't, you know. Yeah, interesting to see what 
I suppose what will be the favorites? Because you always before an album you you do pick a few singles and then you think oh they might really like this one but usually there's at least one surprise in an album even from following a bunch of artists that i like and seeing how people react to the album when it comes out yeah i'm the same you know whenever my favorite artists release albums it's it's never the singles that you gravitate to um they're just the the, the thing that opens the door into the house you know it's it's what's in there is the is the good stuff so um yeah, hopefully there's. I I've let a few people hear the the sort of full album, and there's a couple that kind of stick to pay, which I'm sort of looking to see if that works uh, universally rather than just friends of mine going, oh, I like that one because of this, and uh, yeah, I'm interested to see if that also sticks with people that don't know me. <laughs> For sure. Well, you're gonna find out pretty soon because, um, as I said earlier, you've done some huge opening slots and. You are going on a mammoth tour across North America. There's mainland Europe and it's landing pretty much everywhere in the UK and Ireland from top to bottom. You've got your biggest show yet in Custom House Square Belfast in the end of August 27th, right coinciding with the album. And then you've got Galway, you've got Limerick, Cork, Dublin, Dundalk and a huge show in the Olympia on the 22nd of September. There's so many dates and that's that's me just listing ireland yeah and you know what we it's one of the, i remember in 2018 we did 18 shows around ireland alone wow and they also and it was kind of like how did we do 18 shows in ireland and they all sell out you know you kind of go well if i'm playing in limerick maybe people from galway will go you know it was weird to see people that were at the limerick show also be at the galway show you know it was like wow they're really supporting um and then, yeah, I think we kind of went that way again this time. It was like, hey, we got the album. Let's go everywhere. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if 20 people show up or if 2,000 people show up. It's like, let's just play it everywhere and anywhere we can, um, which is exciting, but also very daunting because you have to uh, be on the road for all that time. And as much as I love being on the road, it's, um, okay, I suppose being off with the pandemic, it's, it's, I feel like we're coming back to 100 mile an hour straight away. It's not to 100. Um, <clears throat> so I guess it's kind of making sure we do that right and not go hell for leather and, you know, come off it with an alcohol problem and <laughs> overweight. And, you know, it's very easy to do on tour. <laughs> I imagine so. Well, it's great to see you like seizing it and taking the opportunity now that we've had such a long time of pure nothing. And now, now that you have the chance to tour, I mean, I haven't seen a tour this extensive. I don't know if I have <laughs> since things reopened. It's huge. Yeah, it's mental. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually, sorry, excuse me. I actually was a wee bit taken aback whenever I saw all the dates, you know, because I, I was like, yeah, let's go everywhere. And then I saw all the dates. And I was like, fuck, we're going everywhere. <laughs> you really are going everywhere. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's exciting too, because you know, you can always do the shows in like your Londons and your Dublins and your Belfasts and your Glasgow's and Manchester's. But, you know, going the whole way down to like Norwich or Southampton or even mm. Wexford, as opposed to just the Dublin show, it I, I think it's kind of nice for people to, to go to shows closer to home where they're not having to, you know, book a hotel away and a night away and, you know, babysitters and all that kind of stuff. Um, And then... Hopefully by coming to them sort of cities, maybe whenever you decide to do bigger shows, they go, oh yeah, we're going to the one in London this time. He came to us this time, we're going to him next time. <laughs> um, that's the kind of hope anyway. You get to go there and entice them to become fans and stick around. Dead right. And with all these shows, like, what are people in for, for sure? You know, it's it's a strange one because... <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. I feel like I've had this frog in my throat for about since the start of the pandemic. <laughs> It's a strange one because some of the shows are to 5,000 people and other shows are to like, I think the smallest room is 150 people. So trying to translate a show uh, from that size, from the, the biggest to the smallest will be a will be a challenge for sure. But, you know, you could, <laughs> this is where my head goes. I don't really know whether to give them the full show because you shouldn't treat them any differently in the smaller room or do you give them a special show that, Hey, there's only 150 people here. Let's do something just for you. Um, and I think 
you know, the only way to really do that is to do the shows. I think you that's something that you learn as you're going. Uh, to to make that decision now would be strange, um, because you don't even know the shape of the room, the size of the room, um, the the equipment they have, you know. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, I guess it's all up to whatever happens on the day, <laughs> but it'll sure. I mean, it'll be brilliant. Regard well, I'll be putting as much as I can into whatever the show is. Um, because even though the shows may be different sizes, I'm pretty sure all the tickets are the same price. And, you know, I don't think it's fair for someone to pay the same price and get a substandard show. So I'll be there 100%. <laughs> You'll be there 100%. You'll be all over the place, going across Ireland, across the UK with huge shows in Dublin, the Olympia, 22nd September. Custom House Square Belfast, 27th of August. The album redesign is out on the 26th of August. Thank you so much, Ryan McMullen, for coming on to Lameheart to talk to me all about it. Oh, cheers. Thanks for having me.